Good evening. My name is Lewis Powell, and it's my pleasure, I really mean that, my pleasure to be before you once again on behalf of the Cook County Bar Association, the world's oldest yes, jury. That's right. Oldest <laughs> African American Bar Association in the world, and we're very proud of that. Today we have a very distinguished guest, just a, just a nice guy who's going to come before you, and if no one calls you, you and I just going to talk. That sounds good to me. Now, the subject we're going to be talking about today is, is judicial evaluations, the judicial process, so forth and so on. But before we get into that, Yuri, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm a longtime, lifelong Southsider of Chicago. I've been uh, practicing law since 1979. And right now I work for the Circuit Court of Cook County and I kind of help people get through the mortgage foreclosure process. And that's, that's an important position. That's Because you, you and I both know there are a lot of foreclosures going on. Absolutely. And a, and a lot of folks need help. Yuri's in the position, and you can talk about it if you wish, in terms of offering counseling to individuals, so forth and so on, and letting them know of the various things that they could do when they're in the, in the foreclosure. Correct. When people come in for the first date of the foreclosure, I kind of give them direction on how to seek housing counseling. I give them direction on how to get free legal advice if they need it. And I also... Um, recommend to the judges what type of situation, what type of ruling the judge should make after speaking to those people. That's critical. Yes. That is very critical. You where did you go to law school? DePaul University. Okay. Here in okay. Chicago. That's not quite <laughs> right across good. the street. It's not quite as good as John Marshall, but <laughs> some notable people have have come through DePaul. Yes. Just just kidding. Where did yeah. you go to high school? I went to Mendel High School in Chicago here on 111th and King Drive. I know where is that? Right. I, I went to Finger. Oh there How you go right college? down the street. Right down the street. Right down the street. How about college? Uh, first, I started at the University of Wisconsin in Platteville, and then I finished in Loyola University here in Chicago. Okay, okay. All good institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, our number is 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try to cover some ground. Sounds we're good gonna, to me. We're going we're to cover some ground. Okay. You're... This, describe the, the process in terms of how individuals become judges. Well, there are three primary ways here in Cook County. First of all, there are about 400 judges in Cook County, and about one-third of them are what's called associate judges. So the three ways, typically, is one is to be appointed by the Supreme Court of Illinois. The second one that most people know about is running for election on the general election, and there are circuit judges and there are sub-circuit judges. And that's the judges that the people elect. One third of the judges sitting on the benches, though, are what, what's called associate judges. And the public has no power in appointing them or electing them. The associate judges are elected uh, by the judges themselves, the sitting judges. And they and, go through a process. And would those be the circuit judges? They, full the sir, full circuit judges appoint. Uh, elect the associate judges. You're, you know, we want to make it simple for our audience right. because a lot of people, they know we have judges. Can you explain the distinction between a judge that is elected countywide yes. and the distinction of a judge that's elected from a sub-circuit? Correct. Well, in the past, they were all elected countywide. Somebody would go out and run um, put up their, their, their banners and say, elect me as judge. A while back, people realized that African American and minority judges weren't being properly represented, they weren't being elected because they could not afford to run countywide. And this it's is a, a big county. It's a huge county. So some very bright, talented young people came up uh, and decided that, hey, we're going to change the law and make it easier for our people to get elected. And through a bunch of legislation, they got what was called sub-circuits. And there are 15 sub-circuits within Cook County. And they were developed to maintain a more broader spectrum of the actual population of Cook County to get more minorities, more blacks to be able to be elected judges. You know, I want to I want to explore this a little bit more. In terms of a sub-circuit, it's my understanding that a sub-circuit is a limited geographical area. So it's supposed to run because again, Cook County is a large county. Right. 
as opposed to running countywide, meaning, meaning you have to carry the county. Correct. If you're in a sub-circuit, my understanding, a sub-circuit could very well be, be a couple of wards. That's right. And it's divvied up. The way it's divided up is part of a political process that take, took a long fight. But sometimes there are two or three wards, sometimes four. And they'll run in different directions within the city. So if you were able to Google or bring up the... Um, uh, election commissioner's website, you'll see how the sub circuits are actually divided up and they're cut in turns. For a reason. <laughs> For a reason, that's right. That's right. Well, you in terms of, let's talk, you know, in terms of the Democratic Party. Yes. Now, it's been well, you know, well known that the Democratic Party has had a lot of influence in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of the uh, judicial process, in terms of those individuals that are slated to run. Correct. In terms of the sub-circuit, though, it, it's possible for the sub-circuit that a, a candidate without any political affiliation, Correct. because it's a limited geographical area, is right. possible for somebody to catch fire. That's right. Without That's the right. Democratic it, Party and, and right. to win. That's right. Because as we know, the Democratic Party is highly political, and they pick their favorites, or people pay to be their favorites. But if a sub-circuit... In the, within the sub-circuit, a particular individual could go and meet their neighbors, meet their uh, local community organizations, meet their churches, and go and politically run for judge without the need or the support of the Democratic Party. In fact, just going door to door. Go, go door to door is the best way to do it. Let the people know you stand at grocery stores in your neighborhood. Go to the train stops in your neighborhood and introduce yourself. You know, that's, what, that's how... The best way to do it. Well, well you're, you know, do you have an opinion in, in terms of of the appointment process as opposed to the elected process? The appointment process. There's always been the terms walking around. You know, who's going to get appointed? Who? What type of influence do you have to make? Well, there's the Supreme Court of Illinois has a num number of small number of appointments that they give out. Typically when a judge is retired or, you know, uh, decides to quit or somebody's is no longer on the bench, they'll appoint someone for that particular position. And typically what happens is after that person's term expires, that appointed judge has to run in the election. So still, it is a, even though they're appointed, typically... They are, have to run the election. Sometimes certain people get appointed over and over and over and over again, right, depending on their political influence. Well, you're something, even though I'm a lawyer, sometimes I get confused. Yes. You see someone running countywide, but yet they're running against a select few. That's Is correct. that right? That's the correct. Select, even though they're running countywide, <laughs> right. and they, they, they depend upon the whole of Cook County to get elected, right. they're running against a select few. Can you explain that process? Well, typically, only a certain amount of people will run for a judge's slot. So let's say there's a slot for a certain judge that's available. Well, people will jump in to take that position, and several of those positions pop up each election cycle. So that's how they typically run against a few people. Right. And so judges can pick a slot to yes. run for. That's right. And if you look at the petitions that judges hand out on the corner they want you to sign, it'll say to fill the vacancy of so-and-so or slot A or slot B in the sub-circuit. So they pick their own slot where they think they can win and they go out and try to defeat. Well, you know, it, obviously... A judge has a lot of influence. Yes. A lot of influence. Correct. And, and, and it's a puzzlement, Yuri, and I'd like for you to address it in terms of how the general public, when they get to the ballot box, instead of going any, meeny, miny, mo in terms of the judges to give an informed decision in terms of who they are voting for. Right. It is very important that they know who they're voting for because typically... Who can affect you the most? Is it your, your mayor, your alderman? No, it's the judge. That's who you might end up in front of in some time in your life. You're going to go, have to go pay a traffic ticket. You're getting a divorce. You know, you have to sue on someone. You get sued. Any type of legal situation during the courtroom, you need to know who's going to be there. And 
typically people have no idea when they walk into that polling booth, when they see those 50 names lined up, how, how to vote. They don't even know the people, and people usually do meeny, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, the way we've solved that is that we do judicial evaluations, and there are law, law, um, bar associations made up of lawyers who have judicial evaluation committees that rate the judges and rate the candidates who are running for judge. And uh, what we do is make them fill out an application. Then we review that application. And, we and do you check up on them? We check up on them. We have investigators who go out and check the background of those people. They, if they're a sitting judge, the investigators go sit in the courtrooms and watch those judges uh, operate in their own courtrooms. The investigators stop people as they're coming out of that courtroom and say, hey, what was that judge like? Okay. And then um, the bar associations rate those judges. Well, you really, let me ask you this. You don't have to disclose any confidential information. Okay. But in, in terms of, you know, what the bar associations are looking at, yes. looking for, are they looking at, you know, the judicial temperament? Yes, there are. And, and please explain what that means. Okay, yes. Let me um, say that, first say that um, usually two entities evaluate judges. There's one entity that stands alone, and then there's an alliance of bar associations that are a group of 11 separate bar associations that investigate and evaluate the judges. And how it works is there are general standards that all the bar associations look at. Legal knowledge and ability, meaning can that person uh, handle multiple legal issues at one time? Can they decide them? Do they even know what those issues are? Two, there's character and uh, um, impartiality and integrity. Is this person someone who uh, is upstanding in the community? Are they, you know, uh, rightful citizens? They, do they act like normal citizens do, or are they carouse? No, we don't want them. Well, you're right. Are, you, are the bar associations looking? It's one thing to mm -hmm. have a stellar law career. Yes. And to be a lawyer's lawyer. Right. But are the bar associations looking in terms of what somebody has done in the community? That is correct. There are certain ones that certain bar associations look at particularly. Uh, say, for instance, the Cook County Bar Association, which is the typical uh, African-American lawyer and judge who's you know, uses that association, our association. We look at certain other specific things. One, sensitivity to diversity and bias. One of our questions is... That's a serious question. Very serious. You One know. of our questions is, have you ever observed discrimination? You'd be surprised how many say, no. Well, that's a red flag to us, especially if it's an, someone who lived in Chicago, lived on the planet Earth, never observed discrimination. That's a red flag. And we ask, if you have dis observed discrimination, what did you do about it? Did you sit back and say, oh, that's just too bad for that poor soul? Or did you confront it, you know? We well, already, you know, is it gonna interject? Yes. I think what you're saying is that the law is not truly colorblind. Right. However, you do want to have some sensitivity. You know, you're looking for folks who have some sensitivity in terms of different things, in terms of culture-wise. That's right. Activity-wise. I mispronounced right. everything. That that's right. 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 Thank you. Yeah. But you really want people to be, you know, be sensitive because, you know, right. the law, you know, just, just to say that you're going to, you know, rule by the, the, by the law, right. the law is the law, that does not necessarily get it. Right. You know, we have... We, I know of a number of you know people that have gone on to be with the law, like Judge Eugene Pynchon. Correct. Judge Lawyer Eugene Pynchon was was very famous for a whole lot of things. One, he was one of the few activists on the bar. On the That's bench, right. Kind of hard to do. That's right. Okay. In fact, there were some know, specific rules against right, him. Right, but he did, he, <laughs> he, did, did it, anyway. he did it anyway. Right. Okay. You know, Judge Pynchon was known to tutor lawyers. Yes. You know, take them after 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 he's made his decision. That's right. To talk to them, to explain to them the different trial techniques, That's what will correct. work and would not work. Correct. Judge Pynchon was the type of judge that and I'm not I'm not jumping on our police officers, <laughs> but sometimes they're not as careful with the truth. That's correct. Judge Pynchon was famous to, if he thought that the police officer was lying, he would turn his, turn his back on them. <laughs> That's right. In the chair, swivel, and look the other direction. That's right. But also more you know, important, which really you know, touched me, that he and other black judges, they would try to take in consideration in criminal court 
Right. That they're dealing with somebody's you know, background, somebody's, not just their background, but their future. That's correct. And every so often, Yuri, a brother deserves a break. Right. Meaning instead of sentencing a brother for having a day, right. tell the brother, well, I'll tell you what, if you go get a GED within a certain time frame. Correct. We can do something with your sentence. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. They have to be aware of social issues. We have some fine judges who do that now. Unfortunately, the judge that was just murdered. He did that. He made sure that people follow through. We have judges in the juvenile court who the same do the same thing, who will take young men in and young women and understanding the social issues behind them and the peer pressure. They tell them, okay, you're coming into court. How come you don't have on a shirt and tie? Well, I have some shirt and tie, shirts and ties in the back. Go put one on. We have a caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Go ahead with your question, please. My question is, how do you explain how do you explain that there are so very few uh, black judges uh, and uh, such a disparity between black and white judges on the uh, Cook County bench? And further, why is it that black judges have to have years and years and years of litigation experience and white judges only have to do real estate closing? That is something that um, people have to address directly. Of the approximately 400 judges that there are in Cook County, only about 80 or 90 are black. And that is something that the public has to address and go to the polls and vote for those judges. Um, it's all a matter of getting out and voting, okay? And the, in terms of the experience that they demand of black judge, black attorneys before they become judges. It's just like every other job in the United States. Hey, they want us to be twice as good, four times as good in order for us to even look half as qualified as them. And some of them have no talent at all. Uh, fortunately, one of the reasons that there are the Alliance of Bar Associations, which is a group of 11 bar associations made up mostly of minority and special interest bar associations and so that we can attract, uh, um, address that situation. We can rate those candidates even before they come judge, become judges and say, hey, if they have government experience, they're qualified if they do the right thing, if they, we see the talent there. Uh, typically, in the past, they've said, well, you got to be a state's attorney and have 20 million trials, you know, prosecuting people. Well, who was that? Who were the state's attorneys? Tip Before recently, they were white, typically white males. So, yeah, that's why there's been a big discrepancy in terms of why there aren't as many black judges as, as there should be. We have to get to the polls and elect them. Very good. Very good. You're in, in terms of the evaluation process, yes. if, um, well, in terms of if a judge is found to be not being fair and is right. obvious about it, right. what type of things can the average citizen do? The average citizen, besides going to that poll and de-electing that person in time, they can file complaints against the with the Judicial Inquiry Board, file complaints with their community organizations and make sure they follow up, you know? And as more, uh, what does they say? The squeaky wheel gets the oil? Don't just say, oh, that's terrible the way that person's treated me. That's terrible the way I see them treat people. You go back and you tell your community organizations, hey, call your aldermen, call your politicians. Tell them, hey, if you don't do something to support us in getting rid of this person, we're gonna get rid of you. Now, for our audience, Yuri, mm -hmm. is there a specific amount of years that an individual has to practice before they're qualified to be a judge? Usually, the bar associations, when they do their ratings, they require a minimum of either 10 or 12 years of legal experience. In the past, it was trial experience. We just say legal experience to be initially qualified. So 10 years doing something legally. Okay, but legally, as long as you're licensed, <laughs> you can run. That's right, correct, correct. Now, in, in terms of the different bar associations, 
how should our citizens look at the ratings of the different bar associations? Correct. For instance, every bar association puts out their own individual ratings, even though the alliance does a joint investigation. Each bar association in that alliance issues their own ratings. One of the best ways to do it is to go on the Cook County Bar website and go under judicial evaluation or committees and judicial evaluations. We always publish them. We put them out. And um, you have to take that step because typically what happens, you go to a polling place, you're going to handle a, a card, you know, a, a ballot card, whatever they give you. Well, that's not from... Palm card. Palm card. Thank you so much. They're not necessarily from us. They might be from the Democratic Party. And we, not, we might not technically agree with them on all of their suggestions. And that's a critical point, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And I hope the audience is picking up. The, the Cook County Bar Association may not agree with the slated candidate. That's right. Or you might hear say, well, go to the Chicago Bar Association, which does their own individual ratings. They refuse to join the alliance. They have good ratings. They have bad ratings, okay? So you might want to think about, well, who looks out for us? And that would be your black lawyers, black judges would look out for our own community. So Cook County Bar Association is where you go. Absolutely. Now, we're not taking shots at anybody. No, absolutely not. We just want our audience to be aware that they have to be looking at who's giving the rating. That's correct. Is that a fair thing that, to say? That's a fair thing to say. Now, in, in, if, if, in terms of the electro, electoral process, what does it take to remove a judge? Well, other than going into the polls and just saying everybody in the community, we're not going to vote for this person, there are, there's a, an association or a regulatory agency that investigates judges and can remove a judge from the bench if there's far impropriety by that judge. It takes a, a lot of work because a judge really has to mess up to be actually thrown off the bench, okay? But the Judicial Inquiry Board is what typically would investigate a judge and remove a judge after investigation if the judge is really far out there. Historically speaking, Yuri, the, the caller has made a very, uh, she had a very good point. Yes. In a large scale scheme of things, there are not a lot of African American judges. Correct. In a large scheme of things, there are not a lot of Hispanic judges. That's correct. And quite frankly, in terms of minority participation, <laughs> right. is, is, is not is uh, it doesn't reflect the population. Right. Correct. What things can be done to have more people into the pipeline? Well, for one thing that's very important is for young people to become politically aware of what's going on. All right? If typically the political process is very minimally active in terms of our people, our communities. If you, work, if you go to a church, if you're active in church, get your church involved in terms of getting involved in the political process. Encourage young people to run for alderman, run for state representative, get out there and start voting, you know, get out there and motivate themselves. Only we can cure ourselves, only we can fix our communities. We have to actively take part. We can't say, ah, oh, they're not going to help us out, you know, and they aren't. They shouldn't. We have to do it for ourselves. Very good point. Yuri, we have approximately about a minute to go. Okay. I'd like for you to have the last word. Well, what I can say, thank you very much for that, is that if you want your life and your community to change for the better, you have to do it. We have to do it ourselves. We can't wait for anyone else to do it. We have to Get involved in the judicial election process more actively. We have to hold judges, lawyers, politicians accountable. We have to hold ourselves accountable and for changing our community. Uh, in this today's political, political climate, things are downhill, and only we can pull ourselves up. Well, you're, you. you know, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're you. You're a veteran. You yes. practiced in 1979. Right. I'm just very pleased for you to have the opportunity because I believe you're going to be the next incoming president. Okay. In fact, I'm claiming it for you. 
We will be back at the same time, same station. God bless you. Thank you.